Okay, hello, hello, hello. Ooh. Hello, beloveds. Say hello to me. Just going to share this as we wait for other warriors to come and join us. So hashtag warrior of light as you join or hashtag, hashtag replay. If you're watching this as the replay, we are here. Transmission Thursday is here. We are doing Q and A today. I'm very excited about this. I uh, just wanted to open it up for you all to ask your questions and then we can just yeah feel the guidance coming through. Um, yeah, I think that would be helpful. I did receive one or two questions already a uh, little bit um, and I'm, I was just dropping some transmission on those two questions but we'll later expand further on the topics that were suggested. But yes, say hello. Let me know that you are here. Come and join. Let me say this. Come and join us. Today I am live from Zoom because the quality is so good. And then I can also I can also share from my phone. Okay. Now let's see if I can see comments. Say hello to me so let me know that you're here. And okay, I can see comments. Comments now. Hello, Shanisa and Connie. Welcome, beloved. Thank you for joining. So today we're doing your questions. Any questions that you have on on ancestry, ancestors, um, on <sighs> questions on on God, questions on life, the multidimensional, money, abundance, divine unions, whatever you feel called to ask. Wherever you feel like you need clarity, I'm just opening it. There is no particular theme actually. So we can talk about all the things, all the things that are human and cosmic and multidimensional. Yeah. Who? Okay. Just really, uh, what I just hear the field, just a little bit with this incestic. Okay, now the problem is that when I do this, I start getting a little bit on trance, which is not something I want today. So I'm just gonna stop this now. Because my ancestors, they think this is a session. <laughs> this is not a session. This is not a session, okay. Okay. Yes, okay, it seems like we are we are online now and um, we are going to jump in. So if you have any questions, you can just use the word Q and write your question, uh, any thoughts, anything you need clarity with. 
um, yeah, I'm going to be here doing that. So uh, it's an open session. But before we do, we do that, let me see if there's anything just that I just want to generally share. <sighs> so what I want to share is just a little bit on what's happening in the field. Whew, there is so much that's been really happening. Um, there's a lot of heightened energies that are coming through. Uh, this has been happening since Saturday. It's still around the healing of the masculine that's coming through. And I've been doing some field work in the field, helping to really clear this as well, uh, particularly in the South African grids. There's a lot of healing that needs to happen in South Africa, um, Southern Africa, or really but um, a lot of the energy coming through from South Africa because South Africa holds a lot of portals, a lot of um, really spiritual spaces, you know? Um, so, and it also has a very profound history which affects a lot of South African, Southern African countries, right? So there's a lot of that. I don't know how you have been feeling, but I have been feeling dizzy. I've been having headaches. Uh, they're not even the regular headaches. I just, I just feel slightly like there's a, a tension in the headaches. And this is because of these this frequencies that are coming through. And they get quite intense in, in the evenings um, at nighttime. So you might be feeling this. And, all this has to do with the energies that are coming through as part of reparation. There's been some really good news in terms of like the healing that's happening in our planet. And yet at the same time, there's a lot of, a lot of grief and loss happening once again because of COVID. So um, let's keep our beloved ones in our prayers, you know, let's uh, um i just feel like a lot of souls that are transitioning are transitioning with shock they were not expecting that so there's that activity as well so we need to also pray for souls that have passed on so that they return to the primal sleep with god our god the godhead they return home properly and uh they find peace so please do that i think a lot of people think that once you transition, you are no longer like everything is like, oh, go straight to the space. But we continue with our belief systems even when we've transitioned and we can be attached to our lives on planet Earth. And it can be a very difficult yeah, process. This is where the idea experiences of ghosts come from. So we need to pray for those souls that are transitioning so that they have the courage and the strength to transition and go back home. Okay, so let's do that. Yes. Okay, so um, drink lots of water all the time. Uh, if you would like, I'm going to actually share in a water activation that I teach my, my student in one of my posts in the coming days which can help with just activating your water so that your water is helping you to heal and it's helping with these energies that are coming in. Uh, we, water is a powerful medicine, you know, as we know as Africans, um, we, we really, really value water. So use your water, activate your water so that it helps you with these energies and um, yeah. If you can get the proper alkaline waters, kanjan waters, whichever waters in the shops, please buy those. But um, we have the power also to literally activate our water and clear it and use the water to heal the body. Okay, so please check out, uh, I will post it in the tribe of warriors, this activation. So please join the group and then go check out this activation. If, if you are not in the Facebook group, I will post it in the Telegram, in my Telegram channel. It's called the Warriors of Light channel as well. You can send me a DM if you wanna get the link and I'll share it. And then you can 
Um, yeah, you can get, I communicate a lot in Telegram as well, and I share some inspiration, some thoughts, which can be like helpful if you want. Okay. Yes. Okay. So let's jump into the questions that that you have. So if you have any questions about anything, please use the word Q and write the question. So we're going to jump into Neo's question. She posted it on Telegram. Okay. So Neo wants uh, to know more about universal laws and how it affects the soul. Okay. Ha, huh. <laughs> universal laws is such a big topic. I, I, yeah, I do cover it in my mystery school and as well as the soul. I literally have a whole five weeks where we work on the soul, right? So um, I'm gonna really try to, I, 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 I'm not really sure. I understand your question now. If you want to ask anything particular, like what is inspiring this question, then maybe I can cover it because the conversation of the soul is so big, like it's really big, but let's let's see what's gonna come up. Okay, so universal law. So when the Godhead, the Holy Mother principle and the Holy Father principle, God created the universe, uh, these, these creations, they were created within what we often call the universal laws. And these universal laws, they're also called the divine logos. And these divine logos themselves, they come from God. They are, we could think of them as characteristics of God, you know, and, and creation itself or existence itself. So what this means is that these laws, it's not like the way really uttered by God, it's they are a reflection of what the essence of God is. So what this means is that, for example, the law of um, attraction, which is a, a famous one. Let me not use this one because it has a lot of politics to it. Let's talk about the law of gender that we all understand. So the law of gender um, is based, the primal idea of it is based on the two polarities of feminine and masculine energies, right? And this is, um, this law exists in our universe because God, the Godhead holds these polarities within itself as in, as a source, so like God has a masculine principle and a feminine principle. So his creations have the same thing and we will call it the law of gender, right? So even if we say the law of attraction, which is that that we should think of will manifest, it is really just talking about how creation happens, which is that God thinks of something and then it manifests. And so we will say, oh, there's a law of attraction, but really we're talking about the the, just the way God is, God creates through thinking, through the thought, through ideas, right? And so even his creation will exist in the same kind of way. This is a natural organic, I don't wanna say characteristics of God, but really it's when we are talking about universal laws, we're talking about the essence of God and how the essence of God moves through time, experiences time, you know, experiences itself. And the same is true for the creation of God, which is us, right? And so these logos or these laws themselves, they are natural and organic and part of creation. So they cannot really be changed. You can't change the law of gender. You can't change the law of attraction. You can't change the law of, um, of love, unconditional love. People just love, it's just there within them, you know? And so when we come here in our planet and we are having our human experience as souls, as a spiritual beings in a physical body, 
we are governed by these laws and this governance is not meant to be a political like you have to do this and if you don't it's not gonna work out but it's more of it's just the way that it is your energy responds to the world um just in that way that's what the governance means you you are going to attract things because that is how god is and as a creation you are also just going to respond like that we can change these laws we can actually really manipulate them we can learn to hack them but that's actually a very painful process trying to hack the laws that the law of love trying to get someone to love you or the law of attraction trying to attract something the, if it's painful it means you're trying to go against something natural you know um at, at our core if you are here you have been creating your whole life you've been manifesting your whole life you've everything that you have went through is either part of your of your conscious thinking belief systems or the unconscious thinking and belief systems and then at a higher level your soul the higher level of your soul which is made up of many levels actually right that um they also are part of the experiences you have in the planet so what this means is that huh, i'm trying to really put something that is so big into a small small conversation okay so let's just do a little bit of a, a hierarchy system so there is this joy who is the conscious self essence and there is a my soul i am inside my soul the soul is i am inside it right it's above me um the soul is what we often really refer to the higher self the higher self is connected to a bigger part of itself which is called the over soul which is above the higher self and the over soul the over soul is um also connected to another higher level of yourself which is called the monad the monadic self and the monad is what is connected to the godhead to god so there are three separations that are all you that are functioning from different levels that are creating your experience that are participating in your experience and this is why sometimes when people say you create your reality it's very difficult to believe this because you're like but i did not create that experience because of the fact that some of your experiences are created by not this conscious self but the soul the higher self the over soul or the monad itself right this whole conversation is like a three hour master class for me to explain it um and the monad the higher self the over soul even you 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 create within the laws and you can create within the laws by aligning yourself with these laws understanding these laws and working with them this is how people create their wealth they understand the laws and they work with these laws these laws apply to everyone every single one of us we can um work with the law of attraction or the law of love to have an experience filled with love or with abundance right but the the issue that we need to talk about which a lot of the false light the false light meaning when we are we are learning about law of attraction and we we listen to people talk about how they manifest the ten thousand dollars and so on then we think we can also do it the way that they are advising the issue with that is that your monadic self your highest level of yourself has a mission that it has that it was given by god and that mission for most of us we don't really know it because most of us we don't know that we are meant to be connected to our soul our higher self our over soul and because we are cut from the soul we really ever understand our lives we ever we really ever understand what our purpose is and so because of that we we can miss 
the power of what's happening in our lives. What this means is that sometimes perhaps you are going through a particular experience that looks like luck to you, that looks like loss, that looks like you are not experiencing love, but it is connected to your monad or your higher self mission. So you, because you don't know this, because you're not connected with your higher self, you, you will try to create a different experience for yourself and you will try to hack the laws and then it will be very painful for you because you keep trying to create wealth for yourself or you keep trying to create a relationship with someone and it just seems to not work and you don't understand why because the higher truth or the higher mission itself requires that you go into separation or you explore uh, scarcity for a particular healing that your soul needs you to really move through. So you could be going through a powerful, profound healing, but you don't see it that way because you are limited. And so when you try to create a separate experience, it's like you're going against your, you're going against the, <laughs> the natural laws of your path, the, the logos that are meant to happen in a particular way, right? So one of the most profound thing you could ever do is to connect with your higher self. The more you are on this path, you will connect with your higher self and you begin to hear <laughs> the voice of your higher self and you will understand your journey more, you understand your purpose more, your higher inner self will be the core creator. In fact, it's better to trust your God self, the higher level of you than your physical self because you are so limited in the thinking and in the understanding of the universal laws. This is why there's always this kind of invitation to surrender to divine will. Divine will is, you know, understanding that there is a will that comes from God that was given to your soul, that your soul is here to experience. And some of that sometimes looks painful, looks hurtful, yet there is a bigger mission to it. I call it the multidimensional mission and I help people understand that multidimensional mission. Once you do, it's easier to get in alignment with the universal logos and to create because you are no longer fighting your soul. You're no longer trying to do it from your mental self, your ego. Your ego thinks it's dying all the time. So it's always trying to remove itself from what it causes suffering and pain. But suffering is in the mind, it's in the ego. The soul doesn't always see, see things as suffering because the soul understand is an eternal being, it's infinite. It will always exist. So what looks like pure suffering for you to the, your higher self, it's not suffering. And so these are like how they all work out, you know, like how this all connect, not work out. So I, I love the soul, I work with the soul. I, I tell people when they come to work with me that I know you want to connect with your ancestors first, but I think you should connect with your soul first. Learn your own inner self because there is no, no one, including your ancestors, who will understand your journey better than your own soul, you know? So I don't know if I answered you on the universal logos, but I would definitely speak, do a live, uh, sorry, a transmission Thursday fully on universal logos and we look at the different logos laws i just call them logos because these are things that are spoken be spoken by god right so if if you have any follow-up let me know yes okay so i hope that's helpful hello everyone we're doing q a so if you have a question um let me know um <laughs> uh, let me know if you have uh, a follow up as well what are you curious about let me know so it seems we're talking about the soul today because I see the next question by Connie 
um, is, is about what are the steps one can do to connect to the I am presence? I think I'm asking for the how, yes, the how to process, okay. Um, let me share my own practice of how I connected to my I am uh, presence, my I am template. The I am template is really like the highest level of your soul. So it's not even the higher self that we often speak of. Um, the higher self is like, yeah, uh, your soul, the next level from you. Um, the, the I am is connected to God. We say that the I am template is doing backflow return to God. It means that it's 100% essence is still with God. So um, for me, it wasn't a journey that I did one day. I started first with connecting with my higher self, right? Um, and my higher self is the soul, the aspect of me that is projected in this experience. And that's a feminine aspect of me. Right, I connected with my higher self through meditation. I really have been practicing going within because the way that we connect with these beings, this aspect of ourselves, is understanding that they exist in the multi-dimensional or in the multiverse or the quantum field. When I say in the field, I'm talking about where everything exists. So they exist as living beings in these dimensions that, they, for example, the higher self is in the sixth dimension, right? So you have, we are in the third dimension to connect with this aspect of yourself. You have to raise, elevate, grow your consciousness to reach the sixth dimension. And then you will connect with this aspect of yourself. The I am template is in the 12th dimension, is at the highest level, which takes a bit of time. We have to grow spiritually and keep learning how to ascend along the dimensions, right? But the I am template, it can be pulled closer to us. It does, it's not like we have to go to the 12th dimension. We can really, through our own intention and will, ask it to meet us halfway and it will meet us halfway yes so yes the monadic soul is in the 12th dimension definitely yeah so that's the high well it's not the highest dimension but in our world that's the highest dimension humanity can work with right um we have not been able to go to other dimension as a species but they are definitely other dimension the 12th dimension is where the Holy Father energy exists. So um, yeah, so that's the highest, that's where the monad self is. So for me, I started with meditation for years to connect with my higher self. I was just winging it, no one really taught me. And I finally did connect with my higher self and um, through intention, like making the intention to go within. As you keep doing meditations, you will begin to learn the dimensions and the different spaces that exist through you. And the way to move through these dimensions is through your heart. You make the intention in the heart, um, the higher heart. We have our physical heart and the higher heart here. Um, so the higher heart, let me not talk about the high heart. <laughs> it's another, you're going to ask me, so how do I connect to the high heart? So, but yeah, they, we have two aspects, the, the physical heart and the higher heart. But through the heart, you can even imagine this in your own heart itself. The heart is the doorway. It opens up to the fourth dimension. That's why it's the fourth chakra. Chakras are connected to dimensions. So through the heart, the heart is the bridge. We can move and connect with our ancestors, our higher self, you know, and then up and up we go, the angelics, and then uh, the galactic, the cosmic ones as we go along. So, um, 
once you move through these dimensions, um, it's, it becomes easy, definitely, through the, the intention. So I used to wake up every day. I still do, but I don't do it as frequently because I'm connected to my monadic family that I can instantly do it right now. I don't need to meditate. But I used to wake up, I remember from, I've been meditating since 2009, but I became a consistent meditator in 2015. And I will wake up at 6 a.m. and I will come and sit for, and I will put on the alarm for, I used to start with 10 minutes because I thought I can do 30 minutes. That's too long. What am I doing there? So I started doing 10 minutes, 20, 30, and so on. And there was a period where sometimes I needed guided meditations by other teachers and I used them. And then um, I got to a point where I recorded my own meditations. Right. So I guided myself because I realized I couldn't follow through with other people. So I recorded my own and I will guide myself to move my consciousness there. Um, definitely, I can say that if you go through initiation, that is already it, it gets opened up for you. So which then after that, it's always easy. You don't have to go for a long period of time. But if you are at home or practicing silent meditations, time between 15 to 30 minutes without a guidance and then making the intention, I would like to connect with the highest level of myself, my pure source consciousness. I make the intention, please come and meet me here. Over and over again, however long until one day, I have seen this happen with clients when I guide them. People feel like the higher self pops up like in your face and you're like, oh my God, did you just come? It can be that real. <laughs> so um, you make that intention and the higher self will come and you hold the frequency of love and the frequency of opening yourself. And you make the intention that you are connecting with the highest level of yourself that is in devotion in service to the law of one to the law, um, to God, right? This is important just so that you are fully connecting with your true self. The aspect of myself that is in devotion and service to the law of one and God, okay? That's the line. I know that people will expect it to be longer. That's the process. It's really that simple. And it's all about practice. The more you practice, something eventually happens. If you go through initiation uh, or you have a guide, then they can guide you through this process and you will meet your higher self. Everyone who I work with, eventually they, they understand their higher self and they work with their ancestors and higher selves and they know the distinction, right? But it's all about practice, yeah. Okay, I hope that's helpful, Connie, yay. Okay. So what is the difference between the spirit and the soul? Huh, this one, the spirit is the primordial essence, the, the, the primordial essence of your origins. And spirit is, is anything that has retained its essence, its pure source consciousness, right? Um, however, of course, we can have different um, other spirits that are not necessarily in that pure self, source self. But spirit itself, it's, it's, it's usually the aspect of us that is beyond the physical realm it is experiencing itself beyond the, the spiritual realm is an animating essence oh how do i say this in regular english yes so yes yeah, so spirit is definitely the primordial essence of your being and the primordial essence of of creation it's like the flame, 
you know, the igniting energy frequency. And the spirit ignites and animates the soul. The soul is what gets embodied, what gets physical, you know? So we are so, like, for me to exist, my soul is connected to me. And my spirit is beyond the soul. It's the higher level, it's the primordial essence. It's within me though. It moves within me as a Holy Spirit that comes all the way from the Godhead, which is the highest level of our creation. Um, that is, it's like, yeah, it's, 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 it's what sparks us. It, well, I don't know how to say it, you know? Um, yeah, it's the Holy Spirit. Ah, I don't know if that makes sense. But I get this question and yeah, it's a little difficult for me to explain other than the way that I said it, that is the other one is the essence, the spark, the one that the fire and that what becomes sparked is the soul and the soul is sparked by spirit, right? Um, and when we are talking about like spirits, we're talking about our ancestral spirits or we're talking about um, false spirits, um, we're talking about entities that are not in the physical form and they are existing in higher realms in fourth, fifth, sixth dimensions and above, right? They are, they are not animated, they are not in form. The soul is in form. We are in form right now. Yeah. This is as best as I can do, beloved. Uh, so when we invoke the Holy Spirit, we don't really need to invoke the Holy Spirit because it just comes to you when you ask for it to come and you can request for it to come. And sometimes when we, we are in flow, we are connected to the soul, we are connected to our soul family, monadic family, our guides, our ancestors, the angelics, the spirit comes because it's it, it's there to ignite us to awaken us i mean i am already feeling the spirit right now just talking about it so that's what the spirit is but the soul is the animation the one that perceives that's looking that's feeling um yes okay okay so the intention is that you make, you know, while you're sitting, um, th these are some of the best practices, sit in the ground where you can feel the ground. In lotus position, where your back is like straight, open your arms like this to receive energies from the higher arms. Ooh, take a deep breath. Ooh. Uh, whenever I take a deep breath, I just yeah, get activated. This deep breath, you can imagine the breath coming from the womb going up to the heart and the heart powering up the womb back and forth like that. And focus on the heart. And as you're focusing on the heart, begin to see the heart just opening up and um, expanding filling up the room. And then make the intention that I would like to connect with my pure source consciousness, my I am template, my higher self, the highest level of myself in the highest timelines, organic timelines, that is in devotion and in service to the law of one and God, Holy Mother, Holy Father God. And so it is. And then sit and just see what will happen. Typically you may get visions. That's the, the higher self beginning to commune with you. Just do that and you will begin, it will become clear through practice. I invite you to try it without any guidance, just in the silent in the morning, wake up at 6 a.m. 
3 a.m. Best time, 3 a.m. or 6 a.m. and do this. You can put on your white candle if you want, your incense and, and allow yourself to just connect. In the beginning, you're gonna hear all the things you need to do, all the thoughts, it's okay. Allow them to pass through you like the clouds. Don't obsess and the first time you, nothing may happen, the first couple of times nothing may happen, it's okay. It's because of your ego thinking, this is a strange thing you're doing. But the more you do it, the more it will become very clear. Yeah, okay. Whew. Okay, so we're doing Q&A for those who are joining. We still have, okay, 20 more minutes. So there's one more question here. Let me drink some water. I can do two more questions. Okay. Oh, there is another question someone asked about money. Okay, I'm gonna answer that one as well. But after we get so okay, let me drink my water. Do, do, do. Oh, yay. Hello, Coco Constance. You're the one who was asking for the intention. I hope that's helpful. <laughs> okay, so the next question about from Gogezo. Are people able to manipulate the laws? Like, are there people who go out of their way to use witchcraft and stuff to hurt others? How do the laws affect such people? Yes, definitely. People are able to affect and manipulate the laws. In fact, our planet is the way that it is because people have manipulated the laws. It's not so much of like that changing the laws. You can't change the law. The law is the law, but they use the laws to create and to be in service to themselves in irrespectful of how that affects other people. So what does this look like? Um, this looks like, you know, um, just people who understand the law of attraction and manifestation, who can use this law to create wealth for themselves and actually create laws, physical laws in the world that will allow them to have more wealth than other people. There are also people who have manipulated the laws by one, ensuring that the human race does not know about the laws right, where we are not taught these laws. And so we are literally just existing in the world with whatever they have given us, whatever information we were given and we believe this is it, this is how life is supposed to be. So yeah, definitely people manipulate the laws. Um, they are literal families and lineages that are like the 1% that are controlling our world. And how do they control our world? They control our world through what is called reversals, where they reverse the impact and the effect of the laws. They take what was created by God and do the opposite of that. And then they ensure that we learn that as humanity and we end up having a world where there is violence, there is war, there is heartbreak in the world. Why do you think that's the case? This is the case because these people, beings, even entities have come in this planet, which was a glorious planet, which was a planet where the laws were truly experienced. And this is symbolic in the Garden of Eden, right? When we went from the Garden of Eden, that's when you know, we started to manipulate and reverse and inverted the laws, the logos, right? Um, and misused these logos, misused them for ourselves. Ha! Huh. So you guys may have picked that I have a little bit of a problem with the new age, and I'm someone who used to be part of the new age, and I wasn't aware before, but I have since grown 
because to see that they are some part of the new age be beliefs and philosophies that are actually for manipulating the laws. And in some ways we may not see it, but we may actually perceive them as black magic practices when we, we are literally using the law of attraction, for example, for just creating wealth for just the sake of ourselves, And we're creating wealth for without thinking about how this will impact other people, right? So I think that a lot of people, when we think of the idea of like witchcraft and the idea of hurting others, we always only think of it in a direct way. And that does exist, you know, um, where there is countries that have war, countries that have, like, just think of the whole entire black history. What, what do we call that? What, what do we think that is? This is a manipulation of universal laws. You, the law of one states that you are one, we are one, but is this the, the truth in our planet? No, we don't clearly treat each other like we are one, we all belong to the same God. There are people who believe they are superior and that other races are not, that people who believe it's okay to have entire continents literally surviving on nothing and manipulating entire continents to give them resources in human form. This is where slavery came from. Who thought that's okay? That is that is a big manipulation. It's, a, it's an atrocity that happens in our planet. Um, but the other element of it is that we are actually constantly manipulating the laws and we sometimes don't see that we are manipulating the laws because we were taught especially our generation, there are some of these laws that were taught to us as the half truth, like the law of attraction was a half truth. And so we end up misusing it, uh, not in alignment with divine will. And this, uh, we may not see it as that, but it will be a black magic practice when we, for example, I have called people, <laughs> For example, when we, during a full moon, we do some rituals to attract um, more money in our businesses, that process, let's think about it. A moon is a supposedly creation of God. I have a lot of things about the moon that one day I will teach, um, but the moon is inverted. So a creation of God, and sometimes we, people can do rituals to a creation and hope that that creation will, will return back and create wealth for them. Do we not see that as some kind of invention and, and oppo opposition of natural laws? The thing about the law of attraction is that you don't ever have to do any ritual to receive from God ever. You, you only have to ask and it will be given. It's been said this in the Bible. But how many of us have done the rituals and we didn't think of it as a black magic practice? Um, but it can be thought of that, and often it is that, that you are inverting the law. Um, and this is this was one of the most painful awakening for me to realize that wait, this is not organic, this is not at all in alignment with the Godhead. And um, of course, yeah, I I I I use this money for the development of myself, but they could have been thinking that was not really truly organic in this creation, right? So yeah, definitely the answer is that, and yes, people have been hurt by people who misuse these laws. It's the whole entire history of black people, it's the inversion of the laws. And this is a big problem in our world. And in fact, if you were in the cosmic alchemy, I kind of talked about how this is why we are here. We are here to clean up this mess, these distortions, these inversions of natural laws, organic principles. We are not meant to hurt each other. This idea of like even, um, this one is big of, 
what is it called? Like when you try to get your lover to come back or try to bring someone into your life, pray for someone to come into your life. That's a black, you're manipulating a law right there because you're going against the law of free will where every soul has the right to choose for itself because every person is a sovereign being, right? So if you are there praying for the man or whatever, doing whatever ritual you're doing, that's an inversion. That's a reversal of something organic. There's a reason why maybe this person left. Most of the time there is a reason why. So in honoring that and allowing people to go, we are in divine will, we are respecting the laws. Right. Yeah. Okay. Um, I wonder we'll do a lot of teachings on the moon rituals, but I no longer participate in them because I have since learned that the moon rituals are not organic. There's a whole entire masterclass I will do one day on this, but yeah, that's a manipulation. That's a reversal. Yeah. Okay. So what do we do then to free ourselves from such manipulation? Who? Ha! <laughs> we call it unplugging from the matrix. You need, have you guys watched that movie, The Matrix? If you have not watched it, go watch it. It's on Netflix. Um, and as you're watching it, I invite you to watch it as if you're watching a documentary on the planet Earth. And you will really get what it really takes to unplug from the matrix. How do you free yourself? The truth is, I know this is almost like a thing that I'm so used, like you guys are used to hearing me say, but the reason why we are manipulated as the human race, where we are given half truth, where there are entire beings who can create a virus, and attack us with it and keep us locked and take our people from us amongst other things that have been done. And we kind of think that's life. It is what it is. There isn't much we can do. It's because of the traumas that we are holding that have really completely overwhelmed us, that we got to a point where we don't want to actually know the truth. The truth is too painful. So we prefer the fluff, the nice truth of we can create our reality, we create our reality. Yeah, that's true. But we just wanna keep with that. We wanna do our self-love and self-care practices. We don't want to look deeper. And the way to look deeper is to look deep within you first. You have to do your inner work because when you are free within, nothing can ever manipulate you. When you free your mind from the idea that you are trapped here and you become aware of your eternal being, that you are an eternal being, you are a pure source consciousness, you have been existing since the beginning of time, you know, I say this all the time and I always feel like it's the most profound thing I could ever tell anyone that you've been existing since forever. You could never be afraid of anything and you will begin to see the truth. You will begin to know that you hold such power within you that God has made it fit in that you were created and that you are living through this history that you were born with a passion for something, a desire for something. That is when you see naturally, organically, you having the courage to finally do this mission you are here for, this purpose, to finally stop yourself every time you want to operate as a victim, every time you want to operate from a state of lack, from a state of there is not enough, that I am not enough that it is not safe for me to be my true self, that I have to manipulate and pretend to be something for me to be loved. These are the ways we are manipulated because each time we think this way, we can consent to anything 
that will make us feel like we belong and we fit in. Even if some part of us is like, something is off about this, right? So the, the truest way to, to heal our planet, there isn't any other way, is through healing. We have to heal. We have to return to the eternal source, our monadic self, our I am template, our multidimensional God self, then connect with the Godhead. And that is a process done through you. That is a process that you have to have the courage. You must have the courage to do. Because actually there isn't anything in the world, anything material in the world, more worthy than the process of you connecting back with yourself and with the divine, with God. And if you could shift and realize that the material is a finite, it ends. The body will end, that house you live in will disappear one day. Everything we see right now in 500 years, it won't be here. It will be entire, a different entire planet. So we obsess about the things that end and we don't obsess about the things that, that are infinite, that are eternal, which is this being within you. That is the thing you should obsess about. That's how you feel yourself. You become a sovereign being. You become a free being. And you do that through seeking truth, even if it's painful. And truth is painful. I wrote something about this yesterday that I was crying when I realized the manipulation and how big it is and how I've been participating with it. And I didn't know, and I thought I was doing something good, but um, there is something at the end of it. When you are free, when you have faced the truth, when you learn the truth, when you understand what we mean by witchcraft and black magic and evil and satanic and luciferian, when you go and really look, what does this mean? What is the source of these? you will become free. You, you will reclaim your sovereignty always. Um, that is what the ascension process is about, by the way. The ascension process is not all about the fun, activation, multidimensional truth, and your cosmic origins. Those are fun, of course, of course, of course. But also learning about these heartbreaking truth, half truth, reversals, distortions, they are the major part of the work. And this is why people talk about how awakening is painful. It is painful because we have to, it's almost like something is unveiled and you look at life and you're like, there is something wrong here. I've always known this. I've always known this. Now I see that there must be a source of this, you know, beyond these just being lessons that souls are on. Yes, of course, the soul is on a lesson for sure. Coming to planet Earth, you come for the evolution and for the ascension and the growth you will receive here. But we also need, as we are holding that to be true, we also have to hold that at the same time, something is wrong in our planet. And perhaps as we are learning this and growing through these hardships, our path is to change these hardships so that other souls don't come back to them. We are to repair these hardships and so on. And um, move away from the idea that all of this was created by God. It was created by human beings. It was created by higher level, hyperdimensional beings and cosmic beings that are negative in nature that want to play God. And this is the sad part. There is some level in which humanity has allowed this to happen to itself. The simple truth is that there is, there is right now entire countries in war. And we kind of just leave with like, oh yeah, Sudan is, there is a war in Sudan. What, 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 what? is so difficult about all of us literally matching there and stopping the war. Why is that not a nature of humanity? Like, why don't we do that? Why do we just accept these things that happen? It's not just the war, it's like, like just look in your neighborhood. So much oppression, 
but we just feel like it is what it is, you know? So this is the sad truth, beloved, and this is the work we're doing. And I know when we come to the spiritual path, we just want the woohoo, the nice things, but there's the other one here that we really have to address. And it's not fun. No one likes it, but we have to address it. Yeah. <sighs> okay. So I just went on that. <laughs> on that. Okay, so let me see. How are we feeling with what I just dropped in this transmission about manipulation of laws? Thank you for this question, Kwekitsa. It was really a very important question. Um, yeah, we need to talk about these things. I am learning to talk about these things because I've been going through big initiations on these things and yeah, so yeah, I will share more as we go along. Okay, so how do we connect with the support system from the different dimension, for example, deities, mythical spirits? Huh. <laughs> okay, so the process, I mean, it's the same way but I am, before I wasn't this kind of, like I wouldn't give this kind of advice, but just continue on what I was just saying. The truth is they are human beings who have done evil things, bad things uh, in the world, the atrocities, the wars that we have seen, the violence that we have seen. When these souls, and these beings pass on, they don't automatically return to their pure source consciousness. They can hang around in the dimensions, right? In the fourth dimension and the fifth dimension. So because of that, we really have to be very, very particular, very aware of what we're doing when we are connecting that we are sure we know what we are connecting with. So when you say deities, you mean like gods and goddesses, right? I, I'm not sure here what in what context, but um, yeah, just I, I wanna just give a, be careful of this type of thing, right? Um, just be aware of that and you, you use your words, your words are your logos, they are important. So you wanna make sure that whenever you are truly connecting with beings, especially from wherever, the cosmos, higher levels, um, you, you are very clear on who you are connecting with. Okay, elementals, okay. So every single one of us, we do have connection to elementals like the dragons and the fairies and, um, the mermaids and so on, according to our lineages, our soul lineages and our ancestral lineages, right? So, uh, um, with like you have your own personal guides, like uh, my guides, uh, which are elemental, is the dragons. I work with the dragons, uh, ninth dimensional dragons. So the connection is pretty much the same way of like going within and beginning to move through the dimensions. And like I said, for me, my guys did not all come at once. You know, I started for years just working with my guardian spirit guide for since 2009. I didn't even know there were that many beings that are connected to me. And I grew and then I started working with my ancestors and then I, I moved to, you know, I, I then did my higher self and then the ancestors and then the elementals and then the angelic and the cosmic. I, I feel like now or anyway in my journey, it seems to just be this organic thing where it's like the more you grow, the more they will be, they will just reveal themselves to you, right? So if you make the intention of connecting with your pure source consciousness and then continue all the time, including ancestors, to call in the ancestral help in spirits who are in devotion to God, to the law of one and saviors and so on. 
the other beings will just come. But I don't think that, for example, they will just pop up at the very beginning because you see these beings, like the dragons of now just talking about them, I just get hot because they come from high level dimensions that if they had come just at the beginning of my journey, I would have been freaked out and literally couldn't hold the energy. So you need to grow. It's called expanding your light body, your soul body and your spiritual body, which is the one that travels in these dimensions. So the ways to do it is yes, just build your light body, learn how to move in the dimension through the meditation, the silent meditations, and using your words. I want to tell you the most important thing, okay? This is it, write this down. I consent to connecting and then finish that sentence. I consent to only connecting with my elemental guides who are in devotion and in savers to the law of one and to the Godhead. Use this anytime you are connecting with any being. I consent only to these beings. If something feels iffy for you, you must proclaim, I do not consent, I do not consent. I am a free sovereign being. Every soul, every being, any entity has to respect that. That's one of the laws, the law of free will. Even negative entities can never, they can't go against that. They have to respect. And so the trick here that we need to understand is that what, whenever we're connecting with higher dimensional, we do this through us giving the consent to connect with them. So I just want you to know as a human being, you have the right to choose who you're connecting with. And it's through the word and through your heart and through aligning to the higher levels, dimensions and so on, right? Yeah. Yes, Zuzi. I hope that makes sense, Chenisa. So it, it, it will be the same, same way of requesting. Um, um, but I do, like I mentioned, I always say, can you learn to connect first with your soul? Your soul will then do this for you. It's safer when it's from your higher level self. I have never actually experienced any negative experiences, by the way. I know I'm saying all these things. It's just that I'm saying these things because we all have different experiences. And I think knowledge is power. We need to know what we're doing when we're going into uh, other dimensions and that it's not as simple as just connect with whoever, with any spirit, any entity, any deity, any elemental. You don't need to do that. Connect with your own personal ones. The thing is they will come to you. My, my dragon came to me. I didn't call it. It just came one day. Yeah. Okay. Yes. Ha, okay. Yes, Connie, it's really, really sad. Yeah, this is one of the, 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 the most painful initiation when you realize you have been condoning, you have been consenting, allowing things to happen. And we keep saying the government and this and that, and it's like, but what about us? What is our role? What are we doing to change these? And I mean, it's not like we have the power to change a lot of things in terms of like, um, laws and whatnot, our physical laws, unless you are a lawyer, but like we can show our lack of consent, like refuse consent in our lives. The best way to do that is start with you, with choosing how you participate, being aware of everything you're participating in and really questioning if, if any other being could possibly get hurt or be hurt by whatever you're participating in. If we do that, the more of us who do that, the more we will return to the natural organic timelines. Yeah, okay. So uh, there was a question about money, but I feel let's, let's do this as an entire class next week, right? I think it's a big one. So next week we'll talk about money. Um, 
money for the genetic path cutter? Like how do we work with the law of abundance as genetic path cutter? How can we align with the organic way of creating money? Um, why is it important for us to understand money as a frequency and to, as genetic path cutters, to do our money work and why it's one of the most powerful work you would ever do? Because you see, money is actually connected to these systems I'm talking about. The reason why we are not able to do some things is because of money, which is why we need to understand it as a resource. It allows us to keep connecting back to source and our source self, money. So we're gonna learn about these, like learning about money from a spiritual perspective and a physical perspective and how you need to heal this. If you are a coach, a healer, a practitioner, or someone who knows somewhere in their life, one day they will probably become a practitioner or they're an artist or a creative. One of the biggest work you can ever do for your soul is heal this big wound. It's a big one, right? Um, so yes, uh, we will do money next week. Uh, yeah, I hope this Q&A was helpful. I kind of enjoyed it because you guys threw just, yeah, we went along with uh, what was coming through and I hope that this was, um, yeah. It was the transmission that, yeah, will help and facilitate with your ascension, with your spiritual journey. You are a pure source consciousness. You are eternal. You are a sovereign being. You have the power of the logos of words, of making intentions, please always, always make them. You can always, always go straight to God, commune with God, commune with your God self, your higher self, monadic self. It is not that complicated as a simple process of intention, setting intentions, sitting in the eternal silence and eventually something will come through in the eternal silence and that will be your, the voice of your soul. And this here is the most profound work you can do. And then from there on, you can do expand along the dimensions with working with your ancestral helping spirits to heal your ancestors. You can begin to work with the elementals, the, the star brothers and sisters, um, the cosmic ones, your guardians and all the amazing support team your evolution support team that is available for you. We all have them. It is definitely a beautiful, beautiful, worthy journey to take. And um, you just need the courage to face the truth of the soul and this planet, which is, yeah a journey and a half okay so i wish you all the best with that jenny i will see you next week on transmission thursday bye beloved mm.